Hello and a very warm welcome to another edition of Talking Germany, the show where we do just that. And my guest today is a woman who can make a very fair claim to being the greatest actress in post-war movie making here in Germany and surely the greatest diva. And here she is in person, Hannah Schigula. Thank you for joining us here today on Talking Germany. You're speechless. I yeah? never thought I would be a diva. Oh, then we have something to talk <laughs> about. Yeah? You're learning me something new about okay. myself. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that'll be one of the things we talk about in just a second. Now, Hannah Schigula is best known for the many movies she made together with the great German director Rainer Werner Fassbinder, including my personal favourite, The Marriage of Maria Braun. Now, that stunning performance and others made her the first German actress ever to appear on the cover of Time magazine. Now, beyond that, Hannah Schigula has made a host of excellent movies with other international filmmakers and she's had a very interesting life. So, I'm sure we can very much look forward to hearing uh, what she has to say say about all that and the following topics. Leading lady Hannah Schigula has been mentioned in the same breath as the likes of Greta Garbo and Melina Dietrich. We take a closer look at her outstanding career. High ideals. Hannah Schigula talks about the Franco-German friendship that's at the heart of the EU's tarnished vision of peace and prosperity. And pushed to the limit, providing home care for loved ones in adversity is a huge challenge that can have a telling emotional and physical impact. Here too, our guest is an expert. Hannah Schigula, diva. <laughs> <laughs> welcome to Talking Germany, yeah? Uh, welcome to, to, uh, to, to Berlin. How do you like the, uh, the German capital these days? Well, it, uh, if it would be a little more sunny, I would <laughs> even like it better. But I, uh, uh, I, I think it's it's getting very interesting, Berlin. Yeah, is it mm -hmm. an is it an alternative, a possible alternative for you to Paris, where you live? Have you ever yeah. thought about living in Berlin? Yeah, I uh, I'm I'm thinking about living. You're in, thinking in, about living yeah. in Berlin. You could it's move. It's getting here. closer and closer and. You've closer. been talking about this for a couple of years, though, yes. haven't you? Yeah, and it sort of but, it gets closer, yeah, but then but it moves further away. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. So this is uh, this is my way. I talk about it and then I do it. I see. Yeah. Mm. Um, how long have you been living in Paris then? Oh. Oh. Thirty years. <laughs> An age, yeah. A An lifetime, age, more or yeah. less, yeah. And when you're, when you're in Paris, are you a star? Are you a celebrity? Or do people... Can you walk around and have an ordinary life without being sort of recognised on the street? Yeah, I can walk around and have an ordinary life. Yeah. But uh, uh, still, uh, uh, almost every day, somebody, somebody comes towards me uh, to, uh, to, uh, to tell me that... He likes me. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, that's good. <laughs> that's nice. Yeah. So that's a nice thing. Lovely. Yeah. yeah. Um, we've mentioned this. I mean, OK, so you don't live a celebrity lifestyle. You don't no. live the lifestyle of a star. No. Yeah. But, yeah, um, I, f I found a quote, the quote of yours, something you said about yourself. Yeah. Mm. I know that there is something about me that distinguishes me from the others, from the rest. What is yeah. it? What is that something that distinguishes you from the rest? Even if I would know it, I wouldn't say it. <laughs> Do you know it or don't you? No, I don't quite know it. Yeah. But I have, I have my way of doing things. Yeah. Like uh, one element could be that uh, um, I still keep doing uh, things for the first time, though I'm... I, I'm uh, I'm quite advanced in time already, <laughs> meaning like uh, I uh, uh, my way of uh, of doing things uh, is not uh, never a classical way, because I'm I'm not uh, I'm uh, each time I try to be trained, I uh, abandon because I feel I'm losing what uh, I could uh, have instinctively doing it. So I have this kind of approach um, and uh, I try and, uh, um, yeah, just listen to, to the first uh, inspiration that comes to me and uh, try and keep to it. 
I don't know, there are probably other people who do that too. What, I don't know. <laughs> uh, give, me, give, me one, give me an example of something that you've done recently that you did for the first time. Uh, well, uh, uh, like short movies, doing my own short movies. Oh, well, uh, mm -hmm. And... Uh, um, but, uh, for instance, uh, uh, even showing them when they're not finished. Mm -hmm. That is something that uh, um, I did for the first time. Mm -hmm. But I'm quite confident about it because I think that uh, uh, nothing is ever really finished, finished. Or when it's finished, finished, then it kind of uh, <laughs> doesn't interest me anymore. So... Uh, um, what what else but doing for the first time tomorrow i will uh, shoot for the first time in the apartment i choose for myself which is still like an e baustelle like mm -hmm. in construction the building site yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. and uh, so this could be one of the apartments that you maybe will move into in berlin you're looking around and no, thinking, no 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 oh. i found it you found it i found it you've got it already I got it, okay. and it's go it's gonna be uh, turned into more new. It's an old uh, building, mm -hmm. and uh, things are renewed, and mm -hmm. so uh, uh, it's the first time that I, uh, uh, I that I will live also trying to what it feels to be in Berlin, not. Now, but maybe in two months, I will uh, live in an empty apartment. Okay, okay. Uh, and try and f <laughs> and see uh, how that feels. A new start, a completely new start. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, it, it, it probably won't stay <laughs> empty because that's the way life goes. Everything fills up, but uh, things like that. <laughs> Lovely. They were real tears. They were real tears. I don't see them because I don't have my glasses on. <laughs> Why, but what, if you say but, so, yeah. What, 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 what is it about the song that, that uh, brought those tears out? Uh, well, you, you know, it's very hard to love and not to be loved. It's about a woman who loves a, a heartless yeah, man, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah uh -huh. a heartless man. But, uh, um, yeah, that's probably one of the biggest pains, no? Yeah, In, absolutely, yeah. Uh, but then why did she choose him? Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's talk about you choosing somebody or somebody choosing you, this famous encounter that you had with Rainer Werner Fassbinder, mm. yeah? You were very young when you met. How, how, mm. how old were you? Oh, I was not so very young because I was already like almost a finished student. I had, I was, uh, I had, I was 24, 25. Okay. And you were doing acting classes? Uh, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, yeah. I was, uh, I was a student in philology and then mm -hmm. I wanted to ha make an, some extra money serving in a restaurant and some other uh, girl who did the same thing for just for a little money. Mm -hmm. She said, I'm in, a, in an acting school. It's interesting. I said, I come with you yeah. just to, to go and see. And so I went and see and I saw also Fassbinder in this yeah. group. And uh, uh, he, he, he was uh, already uh, very shy, but a very striking personality. Mm -hmm. what do you, when you say striking, was he... Uh, he was just so different. He was different? Yeah. Yeah. He was. I get the feeling from everything that I've read. I mean, I've read a lot about him, yeah. and, I, and, and you know, I've, I've watched a lot of the films. Yeah. I get, I get the feeling that he was like irresistible. Yeah, but well, but yeah, yeah. But when you got in there, yeah, there was trouble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he had some uh, a hypnotic uh, attraction, especially f for people who who like to be hypnotized. Yeah. But uh, uh, was that yeah. you, were you were you did do you count yourself in that category? Uh, uh, yes, mm. I like to be hypnotized by uh, by uh, a special talent. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. And he... I don't like to be uh, subdued. To to mm -hmm. uh, uh, I, I I mean I don't want to be mistreated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't want to be subjected. No, you want, no, no. no. Okay. I don't want to be the object, uh, mm -hmm. made an object but for that. You, you were talking of objects, I mean, it, it has been said very often that I mean the the films that Rainer Benavassbinder made were about Germany, 
yeah. in very many ways. Yeah. But they were, also, they were often about emotions, relationships, about sex. And yeah. in his films, you were a sex symbol. And that's what they said, yeah. Can you live with that? Is that... Uh, well, no. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> what does it mean to you now when you look back? Yeah? Well, when I look back, I, I mean, when you're young, you like to be sexy. Yeah. It's part of the game. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's great pleasure to, to be able to, to attract. Yeah. But uh, you better don't get hung up on it. Another term that's been you're not happy with with diva, yeah. You you can work yeah. with sex yeah. sex symbol, but you, you um, the French say that you are a femme fatale. Yeah. What well, is a femme fatale? What femme is that? Fatale. Why fatale? Yeah, but well, what does it describe? I mean, what, does, what does a femme fatale do? I mean, do? fatale in this sense means you you can't avoid uh, being attracted to or something. Fatale yeah. means also it's it's bad for you, no? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't know. I don't, don't know. care about all those uh, about all labels. Yeah. I like. I, ca I can live with the label mu to be a muse of somebody. Okay. This I think is very beautiful. That in some uh, way that cannot that doesn't even sometimes need a lot of words. You uh, you sort of uh, uh, join what you have to give to what some other one is initiating and it, it's, it's uh, inspiration, one inspiration flowing into the other. Sure. That's nice. Okay. Shall we talk about this, uh, your new film? The Faust film, a little yeah. bit, yeah? I haven't seen the movie yet, yeah? But it, it looks absolutely fascinating, I have to say. And you look as though you were having, I don't know, you, the, you were enjoying that role, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> well, I must say that it's really just a tiny bit in the film. Okay. He invented it for the sake of uh, doing me the favour to be uh, part of his, uh, his work because we met and we, uh, we recognised that we had a lot going one for the other. Oh, yeah. And so he, uh, th this was just a... a uh, a try to fit me in, but mm. in fact he realised himself that what he wanted to to do uh, didn't have space in the in the film itself. Because when this woman thinks she can deal with a monster, then it's uh, it's the same pretension uh, that Faust has too. He thinks he 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 can deal with it, and so it's just a female uh, a female uh, case. Of that, but then we we didn't have to really time to to explore it. We uh, so uh, it it stays a little anecdote uh, within the work of a great man. Okay, and when you talk about the great man Alexander Sokolov, tell tell us a little bit more about the man. Then tell us about the fascination of this man. Uh, um, Alexander, you should see films like Mother and Son, for instance. You, you, know, you know, I mean, I or, do. Uh, I've or, heard of all these movies. But or I... Father and Son. Exactly. I don't know why Germany hasn't yet realised that there is a, uh, somebody in the tradition of Tarkovsky. Mm -hmm. And though, though, but though he's not just in the tradition, he's a filmmaker of him, of him own. Uh, of his own it has come up and uh, he is uh, he he uh, he has uh, um, he goes very deeply into into things it's just that kind of depth mm -hmm. uh, and also uh, uh, not uh, not ceding to this having to be so quick in uh, not not uh, obeying to this uh, quickness in that is uh, making us victims of our own uh, the pace uh, of life and greed the, of uh, uh, stuffing so much into our life. Oh yeah. And so uh, this is very close to the things you were saying at the beginning of the show. You were talking about the way you live your life and the the pace you live your life yeah, at, and yeah, being an yeah. intuitive so person. So he makes you, he gives you that kind of another. Things are going. There is a, an inner pace that you can follow, okay. and also he he uh, he's a. Uh, he loves a lot paintings. His movie uh, can get very close to painting and uh, music too. Okay, and, and, and one of the themes of this movie, as I understand it, I mean, clearly it's Faust. Yeah. He's somehow this is a movie about the German soul. Yeah? 
Well, or about I, Germany? Well, well, it's a myth that has been born in Germany, but uh, Mephisto is a moneylender. Yeah. And uh, here we go. Uh, so the film is a critique uh, of capitalism? Um, That's yeah, the idea. I would say like yeah. the, the, the latest blossom of all that are, uh, are what, uh, what uh, the banks uh, uh, brought us near to... to uh, catastrophe. To, to, to catastrophe. Mm -hmm. and and uh, uh, and all this speculation yeah. with uh, 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 with what other people have been creating with their energy yeah. and they just sho shoving it around yeah, yeah. so it, I mean the, uh, it, it has something to do with the world of today too okay. and also money as a substitute for love because this uh, money lender is uh, is a is also physically he's some kind of monster who doesn't even he's probably aspiring for love but mm -hmm. he he wouldn't even tell it, that to himself and so he finds this substitute mm -hmm. and that's uh, i think a universal theme too So let's talk now a little bit about Europe and specifically about the European Union. For decades, it was viewed as an idealistic project seeking to consolidate peace and prosperity in and across Europe. These days, I'm afraid it's all about money. Uh, it's all about the debts we've all piled up. And as uh, Hannah Shagula was saying, who's going to pay the bill? And it seems the people of Europe are growing increasingly sceptical about the future of the EU. We have this report. The European idea... For many French, c'est magnifique, but skepticism about the EU's future is becoming more prevalent. I have the feeling some countries are trying to distance themselves from the European Union. We're simply not united. Back then, I voted for the EU. There must be a European Union. But at the moment, I don't know where it is. And relations between countries aren't as sunny as they're supposed to be. The differences are simply too big, even when it's claimed that Germany and France are friends. The president of the European Parliament, Martin Schulz, does not share that viewpoint. I think the overwhelming majority of people across Europe are still happy about the European idea, but they're not happy about the state Europe is in. That's the way most Germans see things. While the crisis is unsettling, the EU has to remain intact. We can't just tell the Greeks to clean up their act. Then Spain's economy would collapse, and Italy's, and we'd have no future as an export nation. I hope it all turns out positive and that Europe emerges stronger than before. That's the kind of optimism politicians want to hear as they rush from one crisis summit to the next. Okay, Hannes Schuller, as a, as a German who's been living in Paris for 30 years, yeah, are you uh, a European? And if so, I'm sure you're going to say yes, are you a sceptical or an optimistic European? Uh, um, I, uh, I want to be optimistic because uh, 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 it gives you better energy to go ahead with it. Yeah. Uh, of course, there are uh, 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 there is a lot more to do there. I think they have to really work out uh, uh, similar structures from the tax uh, system to uh, to even democratic forms and uh, and. Uh, um, You're talking about here French politics and French society, that it needs to modernise and... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like for France especially mm -hmm. uh, is, uh, is uh, sometimes feels still like a uh, uh, um, hierarchy, like at the uh, Ludwig der Sonnenkönig, mm -hmm. the king of the... the Le Roi Soleil, the, 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 the Sun King. They, yeah, yeah they <laughs> still, they have a lot of uh, this tradition still going okay. and... Uh, well, anyhow, exchange, exchange, and try and uh, 
and uh, really uh, assimilate okay. and uh, not just on papers and also it has to start in school I think like uh, the kids have to learn that we all products of migrations I mm -hmm. mean I myself you I yourself, have a lot you... of Slavic yeah. uh, uh, heritage in me mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Fassbinder if you look at him he, he looked like uh, 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 some Mongols have been <laughs> yeah. stopped by him. <laughs> on the way to to France, yeah. uh, it, it, we are all we 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 are all half half or or a third part third part third part, and maybe that's even the guarantee that uh, uh, that uh, we we just should feel part of human family, be just be human. Sure. Be before the show, you were telling me a, a little bit about your impressions of uh, France at the moment and Germany, and you were saying that people in France have a, yeah. have a very strong feeling, la crise, la crise, yeah. they're living in the crisis. Yeah, yeah. Tell me about that. Well, I think it's maybe uh, uh, also uh, um, uh, used politically uh, in, some, in some way because... Uh, uh, they they are close to elections now, so the 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 the, the left wing is is pushing that forward uh, too, and uh, and Sarkozy too. But it's a matter of fact, like uh, there is more and more poverty, mm. and uh, middle class people are falling into poverty, mm. and this is uh, 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 people feel like they're living. Uh, uh, precarious times and um, they might lose their work and uh, and then what and uh, and France has the be best social system and they're very proud of it but can they still afford it mm -hmm. and so all this is is uh, is part of this uh, uh, constant talk about crisis which makes you feel all the time in danger which is maybe not a good thing for for mm -hmm. um, for uh, uh, keeping your head uh, clear and okay. and uh, and getting the, having the right lesson about it. It's, it's. I mean, let's be honest. It's tough watching a film like that. It's yeah. tough living a situation yeah. like that, and it's quite amazing the kind of. Uh, um, love the uh, the people around uh, uh, come up with. And, uh, this is like uh, it's a it's a good sign for what uh, uh, for society that they they not just uh, thinking oh let's how to get rid of it. You, and you know what uh, you're, you know what you're talking about. From yeah, I know experience. what I've done. I I I spent like twenty years taking care of my parents. And uh, I'm the only daughter, so I, I, but I, I would not have yeah. uh, uh, wanted to get rid of them either. Yeah. Uh, though partly, then I, um, when when I I was doing half, giving half my time, and so I, I of course I organized, but also, uh, of course. Uh, I would not like to to live as long to uh, end up like that. I mean, I I uh, I think it's part of human dignity to be able to say uh, that's the end, mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, uh, go to some place where they help you to 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 take off. That's a big that's a big debate. Uh, yeah, and I, I, I think I, it, I, I think uh, I'm it will be a big necessity even. That's going to be a because yeah, it's not a it is uh, uh, I'm. Uh, of course, they still are living beings, and some of sometimes they might even uh, feel some joy. But yeah, yeah but, but let, uh, just one second. Let, let me interrupt you there because it, it is interesting. What you, you looked after your mother first, and then yeah. your father, yeah, yeah. And your father, I think, when you were a child, he yeah. came back from the war, yeah. And he'd had a tough time. Uh, and yeah, he was my a, father was uh, He going... was not a happy person. No, and, but you said in his in his latter years yeah. when you were looking after him, he became a him, happy person. Exactly. Yeah. He so became that, a happy person. Yeah. There's one quote, I can't find yeah. it. Were, um, and it's because I was could, around. He could really enjoy yeah. that we would walk arm in yeah, arm. That's yeah, a yeah. beautiful image. Yeah, he really, he, he, had, he probably have lived his uh, best time in the life at that stage, but he was not gone mentally. 
Yeah. He was there. Yeah. It's just like he, he uh, well, I was with him as much as I could. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, and before he was so, uh, he, when he came back from war, he walked like a stranger through life for, for years and years and years. So all these, uh, uh, th this generation lost a lot of lifetime. Yeah, yeah, very, by, very tough. By, yeah. Yeah. You said, um, at some stage, you were talking about your relationship to Rainer Werner Fassbinder, and you said that you would like to have been in his films, you would like to have had more, some uh, fewer taking roles. There's an interesting phrase used, fewer roles that you were taking stuff from other people and more roles where you were giving stuff to other people. Yeah. yeah. What did you well, mean with that? It's exactly? more, it's less, um, it's more, I'm re more referring to what I'm waiting for now. Uh -huh. Yeah. Which I is? would like, which, uh, which are, uh, I would like to uh, 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 take on parts which are a little bit in the line of what already Fatih Akin had prepared for me, uh -huh. uh, like... Uh, the German uh, filmmaker, the German-Turkish uh, filmmaker. Yeah, yeah. like mm -hmm. uh, uh, women that are ready to give back to life and not just uh, get hung up what they didn't have, what they still should get, what mm -hmm. uh, how it should be, but that uh, th there is comes some point of... Uh, of uh, uh, gener new generosity and, uh, and uh, th the satisfaction to be able to give. Wonderful. Thank you for that. Now, yes. you've, you've mentioned already that one of the things you're very involved wi with at the moment is making your own short films. Yeah. And you've brought in for one of uh, yeah. for us one of those short films that you've yeah. just... I mean, it's a, as, a, as I understand, sort of a little bit unfinished. And we've edited it down yeah. still further. Yeah, yeah, anyway, yeah. Uh, Hannah has brought it along today. And yeah. uh, I think it's, uh, it's, it's a movie that's based on a, on a Kafka a, short story. Mm. Yeah? Yeah, it's a tale of Kafka. Yeah. OK, let's, let's, let, let's, yeah. uh, let's look at the, what we've got, first of all. The, the story that it's based on is a report to an academy. Let's it's just a report in. on an academy, and uh, I turned it into a free version where this uh, uh, woman uh, is rehearsing her report to the academy because mm -hmm. she's a special case because she managed to mutate from an ape within a couple of years since she has been in uh, captured uh, and uh, in, a, in a cage and her only way to get out of there is behave like a human being. Mm -hmm. And so she did it uh, in the speedy way and then she became a star of cabaret, mm -hmm. <laughs> an artist. And uh, uh, so uh, I, uh, since they were making a, a portrait of me, they wanted to shoot me already uh, in my in one of my new activities, which is making uh, movies myself and even doing the camera. And uh, then uh, uh, I had the surprise, like here, that that, that the monkey was really responding mm -hmm. to what was going on. <laughs> <laughs> that there was a feedback from him, which was kind of sad because he wanted more. He was even at some point stretching out the hand until he realized that there is no way to go through the glass. But it is like you can feel that there is uh, some intelligence in, in there. And here he, is, he gets stimulated. He wants to be stimulated. Anyhow, this uh, Kafka tale is, uh, uh, has been always uh, a classical one for actors because they try to imitate the ape. My point of view is another. <laughs> it's more the question, what is it, the human being? Uh -huh. And what, what did you learn? What is, the, what is the human being? What did you learn through this process of making the movie? Uh, or making uh, uh, well, what is the human being? The human being, I think it's all about empathy. Mm -hmm. It is like being able to uh, to feel uh, what's going on in the other one, um, even if you don't know him, just through uh, identifying, being able to identify, being able to be s s solidarity is okay. the word, yeah. maybe. Okay, yeah, why not live in well, solidarity with other yeah. people? And just 
give me a quick word on uh, Alicia Bustamante, uh, yeah. she, the, she, who was the she's actress a, in the film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I met her like... Uh, she's your sister, effectively, yeah, as I understand my, it. Uh, yeah, yeah, she's some kind of sister I choose, since I didn't have n no brother nor sisters. And she, I'm, I met her while I was shooting... Uh, uh, scenarios of Garcia written by the Nobel Prize Gar Garcia Marquez mm -hmm. yeah. in Latin America in Cuba yeah. and then she came over to visit and then she came more and more and then during the time where I taking so much care of my parents I developed uh, one personal shows because I could just stage them up myself with the help of that woman who motivated me to sing, who was mm -hmm. uh, who was being the eye from the outside and who was staging me up. So it became some kind of uh, give and take, creative give and take and, and uh, 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 really warm uh, affection between us. That's wonderful. It's a, it's, a, it's a very wonderful story because we were talking before the show began about yeah. you being an only child and you said that yeah. you, you had gone out yeah. into the world to look uh -huh. for brothers and sisters yeah. and you have clearly found yeah. a sister. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Hannah, I would like to just wind up now on the show with our traditional Talking Germany okay. quiz. Yeah? yeah. Quick questions, quick answers. Yes. We can give it a try, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> Paris or Berlin? Uh, 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 Berlin soon. Merkel or Sarkozy? Merkel or Sarkozy? Merkel. Are you a star or an anti-star? Anti-star. Yeah. Uh, is filmmaking pleasure or pain? Pleasure. I hope so. It wasn't always with Rainer Werner Fassbinder, was it? Oh, it was great pleasure <laughs> with him. Okay. Um, you don't want to be called a diva, but I'm going to ask you this question anyway. Garbo or Dietrich? Dietrich. Dietrich. Marlene Dietrich. Uh, are the movies... A surface or depth? Surface yeah. or depth? depth. The movies. Depth. Okay. And um, here's a big question for you. Uh, yeah, a French language question. Femme fatale or femme normale? Femme normale. I knew you were going to say that. Yeah. <laughs> That's very much the the life you appear to be living. Now. It's yeah. lovely. Thank you for sharing all, all this right. with us today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Lovely. Very nice to meet you. Thank yeah. You. Uh, that's all we've got time for on today's show with the excellent, the delightful Hannah Shugula. If you've enjoyed her company as much as I have, then do come back next week. Until then, bye-bye and tschüss.